a beautiful racket. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you all, uh, RacketCon people. I want to um, uh, uh, also thank, before I get started, all the nice people who uh, I am the author. Well, I'm Matthew Butterick, as Ryan said. I'm also the author of the uh, Pollen package on the uh, Racket package server that I used to do a lot of uh, crazy things for Racket, including the RacketCon website. So I'll, um, I want to thank all the people who have been using Pollen uh, in the last year. And you know we have a little tiny, ultra tiny user community, but like a lot of fun projects. And it's it's so neat to kind of to make something and then see other people make things with it that you uh, didn't necessarily uh, expect. And uh, just I brought one because it fit into my my uh, briefcase. This was uh, this is the book Flatland. It's not actually about Racket's first family. It's uh, a novel, uh, a romance of many dimensions. But um, a gentleman named Joel Duick up in, uh, sorry if I get this wrong, Joel, I think you're up in Minnesota, uh, used Pollen to make this. He, he made a web version, and he made a PDF version, and then he used the PDF version that sent it to CreateSpace to make uh, paperbacks. And he did this all from one set of, of Pollen sources, Pollen being uh, you know, this, this DSL that I created to do digital books. And, and what's fun about this for me is it's, it's such a great idea to have, I mean, kind of what I was hoping for is to have one set of source files that you can do web and PDF with. I haven't actually done it yet. So uh, you know, thank you, Joel, for showing. I'm going to show, uh, pass that around if you'd like to look at uh, something done. So that's all, again, that's all racket uh, generated product. So Yes, oh, right, so I'm here to talk about Beautiful Racket. Where are the slides? Well, you have laptops, so uh, if you have a laptop or phone you want to follow along at home, please go to beautifulracket.com. Um, Beautiful Racket is a book that I'm writing about uh, write, uh, making DSLs and languages with Racket. What is at beautifulracket.com right now is a sort of initial excerpt um, that shows uh, you know, all the, the major sections, and you can uh, uh, start looking at it while I tell you a few more things about what I've been up to. Because I um, actually was uh, speaking with my man Oliver Flat last night at the, uh, at the bar, as I often like where I speak to a lot of young people. And <laughs> he was saying, hey, I heard that you have pretty much spent the whole past year uh, programming Racket. And I said, yes, that's true. I decided after last year's RacketCon. I've just had such a great time with Racket and learned so many things and gotten to, you know, been so productive. What would happen if I just set everything on my schedule aside and did nothing but Racket? And, uh, and Beautiful Racket is, is probably the major project that I've been working on. And he was very curious and he said, so you don't have, a, you haven't been going to a job now. You haven't been going to school. You don't have students. And I said, no, I just do Racket. And he's like, how do you pay for this? <laughs> And I said, this is a very, uh, this is a fellow after my own heart. And I said, well, that's the great thing, Oliver. I'm paying for it with Racket. Now he's very interested, right? <laughs> As he should be. I said, yeah, I can, I'm a totally pro Racket programmer. Because the first thing I made with Racket, I, I mean, I made Paul in an order that I can make practical typography, which you've all heard about, which is this website. Uh, that offers hints about typography. It offers hints about slide presentations. I don't know if anybody here ever has to do a slide presentation. You might, I don't know, go onto this great website with some tips for your typography. Uh, and there's fonts for sale, and people buy the fonts, and they send me money. So it's just, you know, every day the internet sends me money, and all I'm doing is working on Racket. So it's a great <laughs> setup. Racket project number one is like, you know, spurting all this money that then allows me to work on Racket project number two. So if you can make it work for yourself, I'm living the dream. So why beautiful Racket? Well, you know, this Racket Con is actually really uh, exciting to see because uh, the, uh, it's nice to see so many talks about making DSLs with, with Racket. I feel like this is the highest concentration yet. Um, because that's really, I mean, for me, uh, I came to Racket wanting to write a DSL. For whatever reason, I had the genetic mutation already that made me think, and I'd actually prototype my DSL in Python. I mean, that was a garbage way to do it. But the fact that I was out there trying to make a DSL, so, you know, in the old adage, you know, when the, 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 the student is ready, the teacher appears, I was ready for racket. And uh, so when I discovered it, I'm like, yes, these people have figured out everything that I'm trying to do just much better. Um, so I'm trying to take what I learned on Pollen and that experience and 
put it into this book form. And the book really has two purposes when I'm speaking now, a beautiful racket. Um, you know, on the one hand, it's meant to be a, a tutorial of both racket as a language and as a way of, of making languages. And to that regard, if you're on the website, you can see that there's, there's going to be a set of tutorials that kind of go from simpler to more complex, introducing the key. Uh, uh, language making features. And then there's also a kind of a set of what I call explainers that are short overviews of certain key topics in the racket language. And again, they're just for me, because I still remember what it was like to be a total racket newbie. I mean, I, I have all the questions that I you know, wrote down and, and struggled with. So it's almost like the book that future me wants to go back and give to. If I had like continuations in real life, we could go do, do that. But. Um, <laughs> Just to, and it's almost, and a lot of it, you know, the book links back into the documentation. Our documentation is is wonderful, but it's almost just to kind of give more of an on ramp uh, for people who are are new to the whole concept. Because uh, a question that I asked myself as I'm starting this out is, you know, what is a DSL? And I mean, Matthias in his his uh, manifesto has kind of given us a technical answer, but I really appreciated what Amina had to say this morning because I thought I was going to be the only one to say it, and now the, the keynote speaker agrees with me, so that's so much better. But you know, her, what she was talking about, that a DSL is a way of taking domain-specific knowledge and packaging it inside a programming language. And I think that really encapsulates something important, which is that a DSL has two ingredients. One is the programming, but whatever. We got a lot of programming already. The other is this domain-specific knowledge, which is really actually special and hard to come by. And the idea that there are, you know, and she was giving a lot of examples, all these people out in the world who have domain-specific knowledge that, and of course, you know, what they do touches computers and languages. And the idea that they could take that knowledge and put it into DSLs is really interesting. And, and the thing I think is especially interesting is that these people with the, the DSK, I'll call it, right, the domain-specific knowledge, they're not necessarily uh, the professional programmers that you're going to find on the streets of San Francisco bragging about you know, the stock options they got in the new iOS app that uh, you know, God knows what it does. But you know, the point is that those, that's a different kind of programmer, right? Those are the programmers. They're about snapping necks and cash and checks. They're about whatever's trendy. <laughs> Domain-specific knowledge, they don't have any domain-specific knowledge. They don't know anything. I mean, they know about programming, but it's like, that's not, that's not what we mean. I mean, we're talking about being able to bring knowledge from another area and bring it into the DSL, which is like, such a, a powerful thing. And it's part of what has made Pollen successful. Hey, I am not on your level as a programmer. I am not. Uh, but I have a lot of domain-specific knowledge about typography and design and how you know, writers and, and, and people who publish things want to work with their material. And that's really you know, where all of the important ideas in Pollen come from. And you know, to see that I can take it and, as Amina said, package it into a language, turn around and, and share it with people and document it, and you get things like you see coming around, that people, people really get it. And that, to me, is very satisfying to be able, and that's really the experience I have, is of sharing the knowledge and seeing people say, oh, yeah, the way this dude sees the world is, is a good way of doing things. So um, you know, that's when, and so to co go to the next question about who is Beautiful Racket for, I think the idea of Beautiful Racket can be for people who have that kind of domain-specific knowledge, right? Not necessarily, uh, I mean, if professional programmers want to come in and learn how to, to do DSLs and bring it back to their iOS app people, that's great. But you know, I really want to see, I would love to see uh, more lawyers and scientists and accountants and you know, psychiatrists, whoever, you know, who, who are dealing with uh, the, this domain-specific knowledge come into Beautiful Racket. And I'm gesturing as if I brought my laptop, but that's your laptop that you're looking at. Uh, come to Beautiful Racket and start saying, oh yeah, I see how to do this and, and why. And again, a, a big part of the book is going to be making the case uh, for, for DSLs. Now that said, because I've been spending a lot of time looking at the DSL, uh, 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 what do you want to say, apparatus, you know, Racket has a lot of good features, wonderful features, really. But then there are like a, some little gaps along the way where, uh, if you're a newbie, you can you can kind of get your your shoelace uh, trapped. And um, I'm trying to sort of smooth over some of those things. Like uh, 
you know, for just the fact that we talk about Racket's main feature is that it lets people make other languages, but that's not really the lead message um, in a lot, it's not the lead message necessarily on the website or in Realm of Racket or how to design programs. So, you know, beautiful Racket is really putting the language making front and center uh, and, and putting the fun stuff too, like trying to, to focus, get people into making languages quickly. Um, another part of Racket, you know, we have tutorials in the documentation. They're very clear and they're, they're very good in a certain sense, but they don't help you make languages. You know, there's a, the initial tutorial about drawing stuff. There's the tutorial about doing a, a blog engine with the web server. Again, it's a great tutorial, but Racket isn't really gonna compete in the web server and, and blog engine space, is it? It's gonna compete in, in domain-specific languages. So again, just wanting to bring that uh, forward for, for people who are new to Racket. Um, what else? Uh, here's one that's been a kind of vexing issue for me, which is that, uh, and we've seen a little bit of this today, and Alexis touched on this, is that, you know, DSLs based in S expressions uh, snap together real easily, but once you venture outside of X expression, you know, and you start kind of hacking on the reader and having to deal with parser, it gets, the, the road gets a little bit bumpy. Um, and I've had to spend some time going back and trying to kind of, again, find a, a coherent way of explaining this to people new to Racket. I don't think, for instance, it's okay to say, oh, and then you write a parser by hand, just whatever you feel like doing is fine. Um, so I discovered uh, our friend Danny Yu, uh, who originally made a tutorial that was fun for the BF language, which I kind of repurposed for Beautiful Racket. He also did a neat DSL called RAG, which was his, uh, I forget what it's called, Racket AST generator generator. It's a parser generator that will take a BNF grammar and, and, and turn it into a parser. So I took his, uh, his work and I, I forked it and I added some improvements to it and that's what I'm using in Beautiful Racket. Again, there are you know, upsides and downsides to using a parser generator, but you know, trying to show people the, the easiest path. And it also lets you introduce the concept of a grammar uh, to people who might not uh, know about it. Um, another uh, place that I've had a little bit of, of snags are with, say, hygienic macros. Now, we love macros. We love hygiene in macros. They're great, but sometimes you need to do unhygienic identifiers, and most of all, you sometimes need to do them when you're making DSLs, right? Because you want uh, to be able to type in identifiers onto the REPL or into a, you know, a definitions window and have them you know, behave as if they were defined there, which is what you know, an unhygienic identifier is. So um, I think that, that the, the interface and the explanation of you know, how to break hygiene smoothly and, and efficiently is, is a little bit uh, bumpy. And I know that Matthias is probably saying, hey, use syntax parameters. They're great, but you need to know the name of it in advance. And again, if you want to do a language, like uh, one of the tutorials in Beautiful Racket is going to be a, a basic interpreter, because who doesn't like basic? But you, know, you want to be, okay. <laughs> but you want to be able to do you know, line 10, let blank equal you know, 42. It's, you, got, you got to have anything there. It can't just be, if it's a syntax parameter, you have to know the names ahead of time. So that's um, another example. So that's really it. Um, the beautiful Racket website, if you, you can click on any paragraph, uh, I'm kind of relying on Cunningham's law right now to make it better, which if you, some of you know, it's like if you want the right answer on the internet, just post the wrong thing and people will correct you. You can click on any paragraph and there'll, re, there'll be a comment form. So if you see something you don't like, I invite you. Uh, you don't even have to put your email in. You can just be like, yeah, nasty gram, yeah. I'm, Matthew Flatt is going to be typing it right now. I don't know who you are. I may have the racket stock, but I'm saying there's, there's plenty of, of things that can be improved. I mean, obviously, I'm trying to find a balance here. There's certain aspects of racket that I'm trying to, you know, stash some of the dirty details for later. Because again, the documentation is, is wonderful. Um, so I'm, you know, and, and that is a challenge, too, to kind of figure out how much to conceal at any point and how much to show. Um, but this is where we are after, uh, however you want to say, eight or nine months. I, I think there's another three or four months. There's uh, more sections to come. There might even be a couple of special guests making an appearance. But again, I thank everyone for this uh, you know, wonderful community. And really, this project is a tribute to everything that you have taught me. And this is like, it's a way that I can, in a way, give back. And I hope to kind of bring more people into the fold so that we keep hearing about all the great DSLs. So thank you.
All Questions? right. The hooligan. Do you even need You know, this? hecklers can sit in front. It just saves everyone some time. So that the internet can hear you. Uh, because I think you're wrong about one small point. Maybe a big point. <laughs> fill out the form. <laughs> Unfortunately, I would have to fill out all the forms. Ah. So it's pervasive. And this is the following. I think domain experts want to achieve something with their knowledge. They just want to write down the knowledge, and then it's there, and it's inactive, passive stuff on the web. They want to hook up to web services. Right? And they want to distribute, maybe use the main knowledge to have a remote hospital going. There's a doctor somewhere, he puts down his domain knowledge, but it's really for people somewhere else on a different planet or at least on a different continent. So you really need a real programming language underneath that can do all the things that Racket can do. And Racket is not, maybe. <coughs> I'm just going to say, it is as good as any other language in this. And if it's not as good, you guys fail to contribute enough libraries. <laughs> so it's your fault, and it's OK, Matthew did great, right? So we really need the second thesis of the manifesto, too, that programming language is really a, a, a full spectrum language. You can do anything you want with the domain knowledge that was encoded in the DSLs. Where do we disagree? You said. These domain experts don't want web services. And program oh, like I'm sorry. That I was unclear. I think what I was saying, for instance, when I look at the Racket web server tutorial or blog tutorial, is that that's not, the, say, the, the special, valuable no. thing that Racket can do. I totally agree with we, you. That we yes. Don't, we don't disagree here. Well, all right. Uh, you know, you're welcome. I, you know, I, I think back, you know, a couple years ago on this stage, a gentleman named Michael Fogus gave the, uh, the, yeah. the, the and uh, you know, Michael Fogus, a wonderful guy, a friend of Racket, but I completely disagreed with him when he was saying that maybe Racket could ride on the coattails of JavaScript or become like a language on the, on the server, you know, back end. It's like, no. Racket is, it should be, I think, Racket should be Racket, you know, front and center, harnessing human knowledge, expert knowledge. That's where it ought to be. It's not Cinderella cleaning out the fireplace. It's, you know, right, right. in front so, of your so face. So now I'm going to end with a, uh, a challenge. All right. And, and that is, it's part of the, it was part of the big, the, the first picture in the, in the manifesto, and that is, if you have a lawyer and a doctor, I mean, that wouldn't be in the same room necessarily, a lawyer and a doctor encode the domain knowledge, they need to interact eventually. And we have not really figured out how DSLs talk to each other. We can kind of do it manually, case by case, by descending into the common language, English, I mean racket, and, and talking to each other. But that's a manual process. And can we do better? So for those of you who do research, and for those of you who want to do research, and for those of you who have nothing else to do, huh. and if you have spare cycles, that's a problem. We need more books on racket. That can be beautiful racket, too. I'll, I'll license it. There you go. All right. Maybe one more question, or? OK, thank you.